Hello and welcome to this Follow the Wire video for our OEM customers and partners. In this session, we're going to discuss the differences between fiber channel and Ethernet SAN fabric. In our previous video training modules, we discussed that there are two different flavors of SANs, Ethernet and fiber channel. Now as a quick reminder, Ethernet SANs leverage the same NIC and switching components used for server networking. Fiber channel SANs are designed and dedicated for only storage networking and provide high performance, high reliability, and security as a result. Let's take a deeper dive into the pros and cons of both as they relate to block storage applications. Let's look at using Ethernet for storage networks. The advantage of Ethernet is that it's all around the data center and it's well understood as a networking transport. It leverages the existing experience of the IT team to enable the creation of storage-centric networks. Now, Ethernet is available in a wide variety of bandwidths, from 10 gigabit Ethernet up to 200 gigabit Ethernet today. Ethernet SANs can support multiple storage protocols, iSCSI, FCOE, NVMe over Rocky, and NVMe over TCP. Ethernet is highly scalable and can connect things from the edge to the cloud. With the use of Remote Direct Memory Access, or RDMA NICs, Ethernet storage networks can deliver exceptionally low latency performance. There are challenges with Ethernet SANs that are listed here as well. Security is always a concern. There are almost daily reports of Ethernet network hacking, and using Ethernet for storage connectivity exposes storage data to this risk. The vast majority of Ethernet NICs today don't have offloads for storage, and that means that the OS and the server CPU resources are leveraged for every I.O. transaction, impacting overall server performance and efficiency. And because Ethernet is a general purpose transport, it's really not optimized for storage. There's no auto discovery capability yet, which adds to configuration complexity. Now, the Ethernet industry is working on adding device discovery in the future, to support the move to NVMe over TCP, but it's not quite here yet. Now, when RDMA is used for storage, this will require new NICs typically. That means rip and replace, and that's going to add significant complexity and requires advanced Ethernet switching to support lossless Ethernet environments as well. This also limits the scalability to a single rack in most cases. Bottom line, Ethernet is a good choice for use with file or object storage or with block storage networks uh, when good enough performance is acceptable, typically for use with general purpose server applications like office automation, VDI, and others. Looking at Fiber Channel, it's designed and optimized only for block storage connectivity. If you're looking for file or object storage connectivity, look at Ethernet, not Fiber Channel. Now, Fiber Channel delivers high performance and low latency for storage connectivity. Because all HPAs are fully offloaded, they deliver high performance with significantly lower CPU utilization on the servers compared to non-offloaded I.O. Fiber Channel is mature technology with millions of ports in use today. It's battle-hardened technology that's been used in a multitude of storage applications and in data centers around the world. Fiber Channel supports the ability to connect hosts to SCSI-based storage and NVMe Express storage at the same time, simplifying connectivity to next generation FC NVMe storage arrays. And Fiber Channel is secure. It's not susceptible to internet hacking like Ethernet. Now the challenge with Fiber Channel is that it's a unique storage only network. And this means there are unique skills required in IT departments. There's a perception that Fiber Channel is also high cost. But as Ethernet speeds exceed 10 gigabit Ethernet, there's, this is not really the case any longer as the Ethernet switch, cable, and transceiver costs have significantly increased. Fiber Channel is available in 16, 32, and 64 gig speeds today, which is below that of the 100 gig and 200 gig Ethernet that's available. However, in fairness, there are few, if any, 100 or 200 gigabit storage arrays on the market today, and likely not for some time yet. So given all this, Here's the way we summarize the question about what, whether to use Fiber Channel or Ethernet. Fiber Channel is the de facto standard for shared storage connectivity when the data is the business. 
business critical or mission critical applications. When performance and security are not top priority, Ethernet's a solid choice using iSCSI or in the future using NVMe over TCP. Solutions like hyperconverged infrastructure or HCI are always well suited for uh, Ethernet as those solutions combine server storage and networking into a single system and they share the same network. If latency is the number one requirement and scalability is not a priority, using Ethernet with NVMe over Rocky could be a good choice as well. For example, in machine learning or artificial intelligence applications. Here's how we look at making a choice based on the customer use cases and applications. Use cases like healthcare, financial, transportation are all mission critical applications that are best suited for the high reliability and security of fiber channel. General purpose applications and solutions like office productivity, VDI, and HCI are the kind of use cases for Ethernet. And for specialized use cases like artificial intelligence and machine learning or, or HPC, high performance computing, using Ethernet with NVMe over Rocky might be an approach to consider. For those business critical and mission critical use cases where fiber channels are the best choice, you can make that choice even better by recommending QLogic fiber channel HPAs. With over two decades delivering fiber channel HPAs that just work, QLogic continues to lead the market with innovative enhancements for next generation storage. We have a strong relationship with all the Tier 1 OEMs, ensuring thorough testing and interoperability. And we work closely with both fiber channel switch suppliers, Brocade and Cisco, and that's an advantage that not all HPA vendors have. And we also have several differentiated features, like port isolation and unified drivers that deliver a better user experience that we will discuss in detail in our next module. Please make sure to watch the video on why QLogic Fiber Channel HPAs. For more information on QLogic Fiber Channel technology, go to www.marvell.com slash QLogic shown here. And be sure to check out our other Follow the Wire videos on the Marvell YouTube channel. Thanks for your time. We really appreciate it. Have a wonderful rest of your day.